Hello everyone, I'd like to show you an example of creating various reliefs within ArtCam 2011 using different techniques and then using the clip art library to assemble them all together and then machine the part. In this particular example we have a logo to produce a whiskey bottle this particular piece would be to create a plaque for the logo. It could be shrunk down and then used as an embossing die or it could also be used as a die casting for an optic. It would obviously need to be mirrored and have shrinkage put on it. Basically all of the form would be there. So this is the finished product. As you can see it's got the stag on top of some rocks it has some V-bit carving over the top of the banner and some leaves around the edge the grass was done using a new feature within ArtCam 2011 called Contour Blend it's quite a cool feature first of all we're going to model the stag so I'll open up another instance of ArtCam 2011 and here we have my imported stag image as you can see here are the sizes on the right hand side of the screen I've just dragged this into art camera I haven't changed any of the sizes or anything first of all because this image is quite detailed what we're going to do is we're going to trace around the edge of the stag I'm going to show you a technique to actually build up the different levels so it adds to the depth of the stag so first of all we need to reduce the slider down this is the contrast slider and eventually the stag will actually disappear more or less so if we turn it down then if I go to create polyline I will draw smooth polylines because I don't want them all jagged and then if I just start tracing over the anchors I have to do this as separate parts so then it creates overall it will create depth to it so I'll just trace over these so each part will be separate so then when I add a shape onto that through shape editor it will create a depth to it what I'll do now I'll just go into a different layer where I have created all of the vectors previously because it's going to be a bit boring for this demo if you just see me create all these vectors so I'll switch to this layer, right click on the light bulb, it will make that the default layer straight away and turn off all other layers. And there you can see I have all my vectors, I've just traced over the image. It hasn't got to be perfect, as long as it looks somewhere near. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to use the shape editor, which is here, or you could just find the part that you'd like, I'll just double click on it and it will open up a box which is the shape editor and what I'm going to do is remember the previous values that I actually typed in so it's 20 degrees and the start height of 0.4 so I'll add that so it just adds it straight onto the material if I close the shape editor now and if I go into 3D view you should have a 3D shape on there so that's the start of the anchors if I switch this on this is to toggle my vectors on or off so put the vectors back on what I want to do now is select this group double click on them I'm going to do 20 again start height 0.9 this time instead of add I want to merge high 
because if I added, it would just show the previous section that's underneath it and just added onto it. This time I want to merge high so it blends into the, the anchors that I've already produced. So I'll click merge high. I'll close the shape editor again. I'll switch off the vectors so you can see. See if it's it's merged onto the top. Around here, that will be all sorted out later on when I go to use the sculpting tool and I will smooth it all out. So if I switch my vectors back on, and I'll, do, I'll just go through the rest of creating this stag very quickly using the shape editor. I'll come down to my legs now, the back hind legs, double click on it, angle 10 degrees, dome shape, start height 0.25, and I'll add that because there's nothing joining onto it. I'll leave the shape editor open, and then I'll go into his main body, an angle of 10 degrees, start height of 0 0.5, and I'll merge high, so the hind legs blend into it. Then I'll select the front legs, an angle of 20 degrees on the dome shape, start height of 1.2, and then I'll merge high those as well. I'll do his neck, dome shape again, angle of 15 degrees. 1.2 mil start height and then I'll merge high that as you can see it's slowly starting to build up now the final part is just the face I'll do the ears first this time I'm doing a concave sort of shape so I'll do a negative dome shape this is just to give me the feel of the way that the ears go so I'll do a minus 25 on that and a start height of 1.3 so that it blends above the anchors. So I'll merge high that. You can see the, the ears. Then I'll do the outside shape of the face. I'll do that as an angle of 15 degrees on the dome shape again. Start height of 2.3 and I'll merge high again. Then I'll do this part, the brow and the snout. Do a dome shape again, 15 degrees, start height of 3 mil, and then I'll merge high. Then I'll do his nose, dome shape, angle of 30 degrees, start height of 3.4, and I'll merge high. Now I'll just do these little nostrils and his mouth. I've done this as an angle of minus 30 and a start height of minus 0.25. I want this to be a negative value so it cuts into the material. So I'll just add this and it will go straight into the material. Turn off my vectors. You can see it's just gouged into it. It's time for the brow and the eyes. I'll do an angle of 45 degrees start height of 2.75 and then I'll merge high that as well. Close the shape editor, switch off my vectors, zoom out and there we have a basic looking stack. Relatively easy from just tracing from an image. So what we need to do now is go back onto our default layer, I'll right click on the light bulb to make the default layer my main layer I haven't got nothing on there except for this. I'll just select that and delete it. Now what I'll go into is create boundary from relief. What this is going to do is create a vector that will show the outside boundary of this particular relief. Just leave the settings exactly how they are and create boundary. If I switch onto my 2D view, you can see that's created a boundary for the whole relief. So what I'm going to do now is right click on here because I want to add the colour to this particular picture. So when I go onto sculpting it will just sculpt whatever is on that colour. So what I'm going to do is if I right click on here and go to reduce number I could also click it here, reduce colours 
turn up the image contrast. So if I click here, click reduce number, move this over here, and then if I start reducing the number, you can see it start to reduce the number in real time. But for this particular example, I just wanted to leave it at 32 because I want to add my own colour. Previously, because the, all the colour slots were filled up, it wouldn't let me add the colour. So, right click and then go to add colours. For this particular one, I'll add red and then OK. Make sure that red is my primary colour by left clicking on it. I could click on this one, that would make grey the primary colour. But I want red, so I'll click on red. And then I want to flood fill vectors. So it will flood fill all the vectors that are selected in red. So if I click on it, it's turned it all to red. So if I go back onto my 3D view now, and I'll go onto my smooth tool, I'll set the diameter, say about 80. The strength, I'll leave that at 10. It says here the colour usage, ignore, sculpt only under colour, sculpt excluding colour. What we've just done is change the colour of the stack. So ignore would actually sculpt on this flat plane. We don't want to do that. We want to just sculpt the stack. So what we need to click is sculpt only under colour. So we will only sculpt whatever the colour that's selected is here, in this case red. So it will just sculpt what's in red. So if I zoom in on the top of his head, you can see here that that's quite high. So if I click on it, I'll just start just keep on clicking on it. Just move it over. Just slowly starting to blend it all in. Probably make it a bit more stronger, the brush. Just keep on going. You can see how it's all starting to blend in. Just be careful. And come over the eyes. Keep on going, blending these anchors a little bit. Oh, that looks quite smooth. Zoom out. As you can see, it's smoothed it all out there. So, I'll do the same for the nose. I'll just do this all over the nose. Just want to get rid of all these lines. Just keep on doing it. Be careful of the nostrils. Just do a quick one. And over the top of the nose. Get rid of these lines here. Down the cheek. So it's all blending in. Do a quick, quick one over the eyes and over the mouth. Zoom out. Just pan it over. Do a quick one down this cheek. Quick one over the eyes. What I'm going to do with the ears, I'm going to do it so far up and then leave it sharp so they look like proper ears that looks quite cool so there you can see just the head is done and it looks a lot better so what I'm going to do now is bring in a stag that I've already smoothed so I'll just drag that into my front relief and I'll right click and delete that relief and then turn this relief on. Right, so this is my finished stack. I'll zoom around and you can see it. Made sure that I've done quite a lot of smoothing around here. So it just it just creates the folds where the muscles are and it builds depth to the actual model. Now it's ready to have some texture put onto it to make it look a little bit more lifelike. Right click on front relief and select new and then rename this to texture you'll see why I need this on another layer in a little while so I'll come over to texture relief 
click that. I'll do it under selected colour, so it just puts the texture within the stag outline. And I'll click from file, come down to find my stag picture, select that and open it. Now the height, it gives you a little preview here. The height looks a little bit too much, so I'll change that to 0.3. I'll zoom back over to my original stag and I'll add it and then close and then that's added texture onto my stag from the original image which looks quite cool. The only trouble is it's also added the grass on his legs which was originally on the picture so we need to sort that out we need to go down here onto the Arrays tool, select a quite high value, let's, select, let's just go right off 400, I'll select string for 25, I'll just ignore the colour of the usage because what we're doing, we're just erasing under this layer which is the texture layer, it's not going to affect the smooth stack. So if I just drag this up it's just erasing the little bits. So that's the grass sorted on my stag's legs. If I zoom out, now what I need to do is right click on front relief and select merge visible. What this will do, it will just merge all of the visible layers together to create one layer. So it will give me a warning, I'll just say yes. So now I have a merge layer here. I want to right click on this light bulb to create that one as the default layer. And then I'll rename that to stag. Now what we're going to do, we're going to export that relief layer into our clip art library. So if I open our relief clip art library, what I'm going to do is create a new folder for this particular project. Click on Release and click Make New Folder. I'll change this to On The Rocks and OK it. It will give me this dialog here just saying that how to create a library for it. What I want to do is just select this Stag Relief layer, just drag it right over into this clip art library and just let go and it will create preview of the stag and it will be saved within my clip art library. So I'll close this clip art library and there we have our finished stag. So what I'm going to do now is go on to the leaves and the acorns because we're finished with this stag now for the time being.